Hello everyone, I'm Dan Pingshi from Institute of Information Engineering, Chinese Academy of Sciences. It is a pleasure to give a talk about automatic search of meet in the middle pre-image text on AS like Hashi. This is a joint work with Chen Zheng et al. Firstly, let's start with an introduction of the research background. In this paper, we mainly focus on hash functions built on the block cipher AES like. These hash functions are usually constructed based on compression functions. The packet messages are partitioned into several blocks. Then it reaches the compression function over all message blocks. After processing the last message block, output the message digest. The compression function can be constructed from block ciphers. Brinia et al. summarized several PGV modes to convert a block cipher to a compression function. These are three modes commonly used in practice. When the underlying block cipher are AS-like, we call the hash functions as AS-like hashing. The AS-like round function typically consists of four operations. The state is organized into a two-dimensional array of cells. The subcells is to apply a nonlinear substitution box operation to each cell. The shift rows is to permute the cell positions according to a permutation. The mixed columns is to update each column by multiplication of a maximum distance separable matrix. The add round key is to XOR a round key into the state. Free image resistance refers to the property that for a given target, it is computationally difficult to find a message satisfying this equation. Here, H0 is a fixed initialization value. Usually, we will find a pseudo pre image of a compression function, then convert the pseudo pre image to pre image in a general way. This is done by first finding several pseudo pre images and then starting from the real initialization value using several random message blocks to get several chaining values. Among these chaining values, we can expect to find a match. The core is a meet-in-the-middle sort of pre-image attack on its compression function. In the meet-in-the-middle attack, the computation can be divided into two chunks. The computation chunk in this direction is named as the forward chunk, and the other is the backward chunk, and they will match at an immediate round. Note that each chunk includes at least one message word that is independent of the other chunk where these message words are called neutral cells. In this figure, denote the neutral cells for the forward chunk and the backward chunk by blue MA and the red MB respectively. Then the attack procedure is first to assign arbitrary compatible values to all bytes except the rows that depend on the neutral cells. For all forward neutral cells, for the computer to get the candidate values 
of the matching state. And for all backward literacy, backward computer to get the candidate values of the matching state. Sorting the two lists, check for a four state match. Partition match technique is applied. Usually check whether there is a partition match on several bits. For the surviving pairs, check for a fourth state match. Repeat the fourth procedure several times by changing the values of fixed message words. We can expect to find a fourth state match. So the attack complexity is shown in this equation. And in order to obtain a better attack, the minimum of the size of the neutral bytes and the matching bytes should be maximized. Splice and cut and initial structure techniques are developed. Take the DM model as an example. Computer across the first and the last round is valid. Then through the splice and the cut technique, the starting point can be at an intermediate stage. Initial structure enables one to skip several rounds at the starting point. Take the AS mix column as an example. The three red cells are chosen as neutral bytes for the backward chunk. So there are two to the power of 24 possible values. The three bytes are unknown in the forward computation. Thus, each output byte will be unknown because all bytes depend on these three red cells. But if we impose restriction of the equation one, now the three red cells lead to constant impact on two cells. Now more bytes can be computed in the forward chunk. Under this condition, there would be two to the power of eight possible solutions for the three red cells. The initial structure technique is used to cancel the impact of the neutral cells on the opposite chunk by consuming the freedom degrees of the neutral spikes. In our model, we will extend the initial structure technique to every possible round. Next, I'd like to give methods of programming the attack with mixed integer linear program. The complexity of the attack mainly depends on three configurations. First one is the chunk separation. The starting point and the matching point should be determined. We will build an independent model for each chunk separation. That means for each individual model, the starting and the matching points are fixed, and all possible chunk separations will be tried. As I said earlier, our starting point is a state. We will extend the initial structure technique to every possible round by adding constraints to the neutral cells and the consuming degrees to control the impact on the opposite chunk. The second one is the neutral cells. The selection and the constraints of the neutral cells will determine the freedom degrees for each chunk. The third one is the cells for matching. And this also depends on the selection of the neutral cells. We will encode the attribute of each cell with zero or one variables. 
and convert the computation rules to several constraints over these variables. Firstly, the attributes of state series should be encoded according to whether they are determined by the usual bits from one or two directions or none. Then the four attributes can be encoded by their one variables. The gray cell is encoded by one one, which are constant bytes and known in both chunks. The blue cell is encoded by one zero, which are determined by forward neutral bytes and constants, and known in the forward chunk. The red cell is encoded by zero one, which are determined by backward neutral bytes and constants and knowing in the backward trunk. The white cell is encoded by zero zero, which are determined by both forward and backward neutral bytes and unknowing in both trunks. In the encoding scheme, the blue and the gray cells are known in the forward trunk while red and gray cells are known in the backward chunk. One cell is known in the forward chunk if only if variable x equals 1, while the cell is known in the backward chunk if only if variable y equals 1. Under this encoding scheme, the number of blue cells and red cells in the starting point can be computed easily in several ways, which are the initial freedom degrees of two chunks. Here I give an example. We can introduce an indicator variable beta for each cell. Let beta equals 1 if and only if the cell is gray. This rule will restrict the three variables to a subset of f2 to the power of 3. The subset can be described by a system of linear inequalities by using the convex whole computation method. x equals 1 if and only if the cell is gray or blue and y equals 1 if and only if the cell is gray or red. Thus, the initial freedom degrees can be computed in these two equations. Then, we should add constraints over these variables according to the basic rules of attribute propagation. Rules of two directions are different. Since the meanings of red and blue cells are dual for the forward and backward computations, in the following, I only describe attribute propagation rules in the backward trunk computation. As our model is based on cells, the sub cells do not change the attribute, and the shift rules will permute the attributes according to the permutation. The XOR operation can consume opposite freedom degrees to reduce the impacts. Thus, a new variable sigma should be introduced for each XOR operation to count the consumed degrees. This figure shows the XOR rule for propagation through the XOR operation in the backward computation. And the opposite blue freedom degrees can be consumed. For example, the two blue bytes are unknown in the backward computation. If one blue freedom degree is consumed, the two blue bytes can lead to constant impact on the output cell. This rule will restrict these variables to a subset of f2 to the power of 7, 
which can be described by a system of linear inequalities by using the convex whole computation method. According to whether they are white or red or blue cells, the rule of propagation through the mixed column matrix can be divided into five cases. If there is at least one white cell in the input column, all the output cells are unknown and white. If all the input cells are gray, then all output cells are gray. In case two, assume there are blue cells but no white cells and no red cells in the input column. If we do not add any restrictions, all output cells should be blue. But add new constraints by consuming the blue freedom decrease will lead to constant impact on several bytes. Then each output cell would be blue or gray. Moreover, the consumed degrees should be less than the number of blue cells in the input column, and this condition should be fulfilled in case 4. The red cells can be obtained through consuming blue degrees to cancel the impact on red cells. Otherwise, the batch is white and unknown because it is determined by blue and red cells. Case 5 is obvious. In order to distinguish the five cases, we would introduce three indicator variables. Let mu equals one if and only if there are white bytes. This will restrict the variables to a subset of F2 to the power of nine. And the constraints can be generated by using the convex whole computation method. In a similar way, Bx is used to determine whether there are red cells. When there are no white cells, if x equals to zero, the byte is red. According to the values of x variables in the input column, we can determine whether there are red cells. Define Bx equals one if and only if each x equals one and there are no red cells if bx equals one. Omega y is used to determine whether there are blue cells and the definition are similar to that of bx. Now with the help of the three indicator variables, we can convert the five cases into constraints by a conditional modeling approach. The first two constraints are obvious. When mu equals one, case one can be described by equation two. And other cases naturally satisfy equation two when mu equals zero. According to the observation, when mu equals zero, each x in the output column equals vx. Thus, the constraint of equation three are generated. Other cases naturally satisfy this equation. Now, we only need to give the necessary constraints over these output y variables. In case three and case five, if omega y equals one, each y in the output column equals one. Thus, the final constraint of the last equation is generated. In case two and case four, when omega y equals zero, y may equal one because blue freedom degrees are consumed 
and the number of blue cells in the input column should be larger than the number of the output known bytes. This is achieved by this constraint. The second term is the number of the blue cells in the input column. The third term is the number of known bytes in the output column. And in order to make sure other cases naturally satisfy this constraint, the first term is added. Now, these constraints can describe the propagation through mix column. At the case two and four, freedom degrees will be consumed to cancel the impact on red or gray cells. If blue degrees can be consumed, the consumed degrees are number of known output bytes and it can be described by this constraint, where delta is a indicator variable such that delta equals zero if blue degrees can be consumed. Now, we have considered all operations. One may attempt to apply XOR rule and the mix column rule separately. This approach is valid, but misses important propagation schemes that may lead to better attacks. For example, considering the input columns shown in this figure, applying the XOR rule results in white cells after the XOR operation. Subsequently, Applying the mixed column rule, we will end up with a full column of white cells. However, if we model the XOR and the mixed column operations as a whole, as shown in this equation, and we can still restrict the values of blue cells to cancel the impact on some red cells then some red cells will be preserved. Thus, we model the XOR and the big column operations as a whole in the backward trunk. And the XOR mix column rule and the mix column rule are similar. The main difference is to compute the input blue degrees. So I will only explain the first equation. As I said earlier, either the state or the key is blue. A blue freedom degree can be provided. Thus, we will introduce four variable tau i. Tau i equals one if either the state or the key is blue. Then the sum of tau i is the input blue freedom degrees. Thus, this constraint is obtained. Note that in order to make sure that other cases naturally satisfy this constraint, the first two terms are added. Finally, in order to find a valid attack, there should be at least one byte can be used to match. Note that, apart from directly matching values of common words, any determined relations between words in the states at the matching point can be exploited to filter out mismatched computations. For AES mix column, if the number of the known bytes in both trunks are larger than five, the matching can be performed. To minimize the time complexity of the attack, the minimum of the size of neutral bytes and the matching bytes should be maximized. Equipped with the presented tool, we evaluated the security of hash functions built on AES-like ciphers. For all targets, improved attacks are identified. In particular, 
our tour found the first pre image attacks on it around the AS 158 Hashimoto's. Thanks for your attention.